New exclusive footage. The Fulton County Sheriff taking NBC through this actual intake area where defendant Donald Trump was processed and booked. You are looking at that actual room from our actual cameras. This is brand new footage, the very wall where he stood for the mugshot that went around the world. We were ready for the moment. And the women and, and men of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office really stood stood firm in, in the belief of pro professionalism. He said, I recognize you from TV. And me being from southwest Atlanta, I couldn't help but say, uh, likewise. Right? And so ultimately turned him over to our captain, who was very thorough in processing all the individuals that were under the indictment, stoic and, 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 and presidential. but. Nice, right? If, if there is such a thing. He came in, came in, take a mugshot over in that area, right where that great wall is, and then he was given instructions to go back where it says ID and fingerprinting. So he went back there. Okay. And then he came out and back. So eight minutes. We brought it, the bonding paperwork, the consent bond paperwork, to the motorcade, and that allowed him and, and I presume his attorneys, right, to really go over that, sign the paperwork, and and be released. It was heartbreaking. When you have the highest office in the land, you have really, at, at a moment in time, the, the person that had the free world in their hands to be in a place where you have to take them up, child, and have to fingerprint them. It was something that just, again, I, I don't regret having done it. Doesn't regret enforcing the law and putting that individual, that defendant, Donald Trump, through the same booking process. What you see there is a rare documentary look into that legal process, which continues the transparency we've referenced as Georgia does allow more journalistic access and cameras than federal courts or even some other states like New York, where Trump is a defendant in a totally separate case. So we're seeing this and we're hearing this from an official who was with the defendant, Donald Trump, that very night. And it's interesting, you know, it was that same night when reporters and many people around the nation and ultimately the world were taking it in as it happened. Indeed, our colleague Rachel was discussing that night the significance in real time as Trump was booked in Georgia. We have never before had a mugshot of a United States president, current or former, but now we do. Here it is. Criminal defendant and former president Donald J. Trump presumed innocent until proven guilty in accordance with the rule of law for his sake and for ours. Uh, whatever you think of the photo, this is not something to take lightly. No, it's not. It's also something that is fundamentally different, a new precedent. And so when new and different things happen, people have strong reactions. And that's fine. But I will tell you from that night to this new footage we got today, we are witnessing this together and so far, a lot of the center has held. Maybe that's partly because of other enforcement actions against the Proud Boys and other militias and groups that have definitely reminded everyone why we live in a nation governed by the rule of law, where violent rebellion is, like other crimes, illegal and shall be punished. But if you want to take an even more optimistic note tonight, maybe a lot of people, a lot more people than sometimes are given credit for, are willing to go ahead and continue this experiment of democracy under the rule of law that we have, which is why those, including, unfortunately, at times, defendant Trump, those like him and others who have darkly warned that we couldn't handle this, that the mugshot, the booking, or the whole process would somehow make us disintegrate as a civil society, they are so far very wrong. Now, then there are the legal clashes continuing in court. Trump is making a kind of a Hail Mary request for the whole RICO case to be dismissed in Georgia. That's a standard motion, rarely wins. There are other motions with arguments that overlap with what his co-defendants have said this week, including that this DA is stretching RICO beyond the ambit of what the statute covers. And they have every right to make these motions. Trump lawyers are throwing a lot of different things at the wall. In that other case about stealing the election, they are seeking the removal of the federal judge from overseeing what will become Trump's criminal trial there. So those are the motions and requests. They have every right to lodge them. If you find yourself concerned or annoyed or upset about this, well, I would tell you, you're only getting upset about the normal process. And while, yes, certain defendants have more money and power, and that's a larger question of equity in our society, 
everyone is supposed to be allowed to file these kind of motions. But these new motions, I can tell you tonight, they don't arrive in a vacuum. Trump's aides are in a lot of legal hot water. Indeed, his top White House aide, the chief of staff, and who's a co-defendant, and another White House aide have both lost very binding court battles. Meadows, the former chief of staff, lost the key test case on whether he or other co-defendants, which includes Donald Trump, will be able to get these RICO cases punted out of Georgia. If you followed that news, it was discussed over the weekend, they lost, which means there is a high probability that most, if not all, of these cases will stay in Georgia. And you know Meadows thought that was bad because he was trying for the opposite outcome. Then there is the well-known now vocal sweep coup defender, Peter Navarro, convicted in federal court last week inside the same courthouse where defendant Trump awaits trial. I, I'm struck by just how meaningful it is that someone who held the nation's highest job um, was actually spending time in a process <laughs> That was something that so many people have gone through themselves, and it's an example of how visually and emotionally what it means to hold everyone, including if you've had the most powerful position in the country, accountable to our laws, including our state laws. Um, but going back to the state law point, but also I cannot, cannot move forward, Ari, without just stopping for a moment about what we heard about the virulent and explicit racism that a public servant endured in doing that process. Uh, I just think we have to really pause on that, because it's so much of a dynamic of divide and conquer that, sadly, we've seen in our politics, uh, and that, frankly, you know, we've been trying to root out of our criminal justice system. And this is one example where there was some actual level setting that said, yeah, it doesn't really matter who you are, how powerful, or the color of your skin, you will be accountable the way everyone else is. And that does matter a lot and, and requires some pause. But that also is, to your point about the motions here, you know, Mark Meadows uh, was said by a judge, and I think with all of the facts behind that judge's opinion, that said you were acting as an agent of a political campaign, yeah. not an agent of the people. And nobody get nobody, including Donald Trump, gets to stand by an argument um, that he can hide behind a public position when he was acting for personal and private gain.